Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity Open P1AM Industrial Arduino Program Control. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. The link's been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. Now our Arduino programs or sketches can be written in thousands of different ways. And to simplify the logic, we'll be looking at program control that can be achieved using productivity blocks. Now program control, we'll look at subroutines, sometimes referred to as methods or functions within the Arduino uh, unit, as well as conditional statements and looping instructions. Now these three items can be combined to reduce your code length, making your program easier to read and in turn easier to troubleshoot. So up on my screen here, the first thing we'll do is look at subroutines and a subroutine is just a list of commands to run in a sequence and subroutines can be named and used throughout a program to simplify or repeat your tasks that you want to do so on productivity blocks we look under program and you'll see the subroutine here we have two commands we have the the block to call it which calls it and then we have the actual subroutine itself so we enter the subroutine onto the unit if we go back to program and then enter another subroutine, we'll automatically get called subroutine one. So you can only have the one name of the subroutine. So when we put that down there, then we'll call up our actual program and then we can use the subroutine name and we can actually call this program up and then it'll actually call this subroutine here. So actually what happens is as the program scans through your your loop under the initial setup here we go to subroutine it goes through all the commands that comes back to the line after that was called then the next subroutine is then called in this loop it goes back goes to subroutine one does all these commands and then we'll return to the line after the subroutine one was called and because this is part of the loop it goes back and then hits subroutine one again and then it goes to subroutine one does all the commands again comes back so we can continuously do this uh, in our program. So that is subroutines. And what we can do is just we'll, we'll remove these. Next, what we'll do is look at uh, conditional statements. And conditional statements, the first one being the if condition. So they are listed under control here. And there's my if statement right here. So you'll notice that we have a condition and then we have a then. So if you have this condition, then do this. And if it's true, then we do the command. If it's false, we skip this block altogether. So in our case here, if we have our uh, loop, it says if the CPU switch is on, then we do the commands. We execute those commands. If the CPU switch is false, it does not execute commands and continues to the line after the block was called. So it's just a conditional. If this happens, then this. And this is one of the quickest way to do a conditional statement. Next, under the conditional statements, we have an if else. So again, if we look at our example, we have our condition. If the condition of the CPU switch is true, then run the this block of code in here. Then after you've done the block code, then continue with your next line after the block was called. If your CPU condition is false, then don't run this, run the following one below it. Run this as false, and then it, after it's false, then it comes down and runs the next line of code after the block. So that is our if else statement. Finally, on this one, all right, those are two conditional statements that we can use. So if or if else. Okay. So next, what we'll do is look at our looping statements. And the looping statements will actually uh, repeat different parts of your code a series of different times until either conditions are met or if the number of loops through that loop has, uh, or through the program has completed. So let's look, take these off and out again under control. The first one we have is the while loop. And 
Again, we have a condition. And the condition in our case here, um, what we do is we have an integer value and we say is less than 10. So during our program here, what we have, or our sample program, we have an integer inter or set integer, and we set that to zero in our setup. Then we have our while statement, and the condition is if the integer is less than 10, if it's true, then what we do is under commands, we are taking the integer value and increasing it by one. So what this will do is it'll check to see if the condition is true. In our case here, when it first goes through, it'll be zero. It'll go to this, it'll say, yes, it is uh, less than that. Then it goes into the loop and adds one to our integer value. It will then go back and check for the condition again, or loop back through and says, is it, and is it now one? Is less than 10? Yes. So then it increments it by one again. So now it's two until we eventually get up to the value of 10. And then it's no longer less than 10. So it becomes false. And then this will return to the line after the block of code was called. So that is the while statement. And the condition is made or looked at before you increment. So the next time through uh, this loop, so once we're down to the line after and then come back original loop here, my integer value is still 10. So this is still false. So I don't go into the loop once again. So it's very important to know when you're entering the loop and when you're coming out of the loop and what the variables are afterwards when doing a, uh, a loop feature like a while. Next we have under the control, a do while. And the do while and the while are very similar, but the only difference is that the loop will execute once before the condition is looked at. So in our case here, we have our, our set uh, integer again, we set to zero. Then what we do is we add one to the integer value. So now it's at one. Then we do our condition to say if it's less than 10. If it isn't, then what we do is go back and loop through all these commands again, continuously adding one until our condition is actually less than 10. So once we have the integer variable as 10, it no longer meets their condition. So it's false. So it returns to the control after the loop was called. So the next time we go through this loop, it goes back here. We then go through the commands. Once again, we add one. So now we're at 11. We compare our condition is, is 11 less than 10. Uh, uh, false. So then we go back and we keep on looping through. So what'll happen is it'll always add one to our integer value when we do the do while loop. Okay. So that is the loop statements there. Then we have our, our while statements. We have a while and do while. Next we have our repeat statements and our repeat statements will always repeat the loop a certain number of times. So under control again, we'll go to the first one repeat and what it specifies is the number of times that the loop will actually repeat. And then we have the commands. In our case here, we have this example. We have set value again, in an integer variable will be zero. What we want to do is loop uh, or repeat 10 times. And under our commands, what we do is take our integer variable, where we add one to it. So through the scan here, we have zero. What we do is add one. And we have to go through here. We keep on adding one until we eventually finish the loop. Now we have 10. After we've got 10 times through the loop, we then come back to the line after the block was called. And then we continue with the next line of code. After that's all finished, we go back to our loop again and we go through another 10. So the next time through this loop, now we have 20 at the end of that block. And it keeps on going until um, we change the variable or do something else. So that is the repeat. Then under control, we have the repeat with index. And this is a little different. Again, all we're doing in the repeat is keep on looping. And that looping will uh, tell us how many times to go through. 
but with the repeat with index, we have an index value that points to the actual times through the loop that we're actually doing. So we can use this variable in our commands to determine where we are in that loop. So in our case here, again, we have a very similar program. We set our integer variable to zero. We then go to our repeat with index and our index variable is set for index variable. We are going through 10 times and we're going to add one each time. So the program functions exactly the same way, but in this case here, if I need that index variable or know where I am within the loop, within our commands here, we can use that variable. And then we have finally under control, we have our uh, repeat for range. And we have an example of this. Again, this program is going to do exactly the same thing as we did before and repeat 10 times. But it allows me to specify the start, the stop, and the step in which we're going to increment. So um, in our case here, again, we set our integer variable to zero. We have our index variable, which again tells us where we are in the pointer. We have our start uh, variable or start um, integer. We have our stop integer. So in our case here, we're going from one to 10 and our step tells me when I'm going to go, go through it. So every time through the loop, I add one to my start. So it'll go from my start uh, value to my, my stop value. So one to 10 with a step of number one or the an increment of one. Now this could also change. We go from uh, 10 to one with a step of one, which doesn't make sense. So it'd have to be a negative one. So 10 to one with a step of negative one will actually perform the same thing. We could also go uh, change the step number. So we can go one to 10 with a step of two. In that case, then we will only go through five times through the loop before we go back to the um, control goes back to the block after it was called. So remember that repeat will always loop through your program, uh, no matter what. And then finally, on both of, or all of the control loops, we have what's called a break. And the break can be added to any of the, the do while or the repeat instructions in order to stop that loop from executing uh, within the cycle and break out of it and go to the next line of code after. So it will break this loop that we're going through. So if we're halfway through, say number five, and we execute the break command within our commands here, it will actually stop the loop from executing and return to the, the, the control to the uh, instruction after the repeat or after that call. So let's look at an example. And remember, this is supposed to um, make your program easier to read. So let's look at, um, we'll, uh, look at one here. There we go, there's my productivity block that I have um, done. And here's my program block. And my program block, um, what we have is, um, we have our setup and we've called a, uh, a subroutine and that subroutine is called initial settings. Then we have an if else. So if the CPU switches on, then we print to monitor. If the CPU switches off or else, we uh, monitor close. And then we continuously loop to watch for that CPU switch going on. We print the monitor, monitor close. So that's our entire program. Very easy to read right now the way it is. And you can see here that now I can segregate my program out and work on certain parts of my code on another area within my productivity blocks. So let's look at their initial settings. In initial settings, what we do is we take our serial print that we um, talked about last time to our monitor. We set this up for uh, 115,200 baud. We have our serial port 891 and we have through the monitor. Then what we do is set a Boolean um, variable to high or on. 
So that is our initial settings. Now if we go through our program, now we go into our loop, then we go to our print to monitor. So let's look at our print to monitor. Our print to monitor looks at our Boolean variable, which is high through our initialized setting. Then what we do is if it's high, then we do this. And what we do is we do a, uh, a loop, a repeat for range. We're going one to 10 with a step of number one. And we're gonna print the, ver the index variable, which is right here, which is my start to my stop. So it's going one to 10 with step of one. Then it's gonna print a new line and we're going out to the, the, uh, the monitor port, the serial monitor port on our Proactivity uh, P1AM. Then what we do is after we've finished our loop, we set our Boolean to low. And that is our print to monitor uh, subroutine that we have programmed. So next what we do is we will then go to monitor close. Now under monitor close, our condition is if the Boolean is low, so it is now because that's what our print monitor did after it did the loop. Then what we want to do is we flush our port. So we ensure that all the communications have completed on that port. Then we stop it or end the port. And then what we do is we're calling up our initial settings again. And, our init and again, subroutine can call another subroutine. So this simplifies some of your code and make sure you don't have to continuously write it. So what we'll do is um, we'll go back to the initial setting. And when that happens, we then start our serial monitor again with our baud rate, our configuration, our port, and then we set our Boolean back up to high. Then this monitor, because we haven't got our CPU switch here, it, it then does not trigger again because we no longer have a condition that it's low. It's now high because we set our initial setting. So it basically monitor, sits there and waits for the switch down to change again. So that is our program. So what we can do is we can just verify that and it will now automatically compile it into our C++ code of our IDE. And then once that's compiling is done, what we can do then is use the upload and we can upload that to our actual program. But first, let's look again at our hardware. Now we have the Productivity uh, Open P1AM starter kit, which contains our Rhino software here. We have our P1AM-100 controller, and you can see we have our CPU switch here. So that is our setup, and let's just transfer that over. So now what it's doing is it's compiling and actually transferring only the source code over to my uh, industrial Arduino. So you can see here that my it's done uploading. And next what we can do is we can actually hit the serial monitor button. And there we go, there's my serial monitor button. And I wanna make sure that my uh, baud rate is, is 115,200, the, the same one we set before, which it is. And then all we have to do is then turn on our switch. And you see, that's exactly what happens. We have the one, the numbers one to 10 as it goes through my range loop and prints them out. I can then turn that off again. It resets, flushes the port and then turns that back on again. And again, I do the same thing. I send out the one to 10. We can clear that. And again, what we can do is turn that off, turn it on, and you see we can do that forever now. Our program looks like it's functioning just the way we want it to. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.
Stay safe.